Hey everybody, James with uh, Love My Pups, My Breeder Supply, continuation of the Q&A we're doing. We're trying to break these up so they're not just ridiculously long. So let's get right back into it. Questions, okay. Um, uh, when they're coming, talking about dogs coming out of heat, when, they, when dogs are coming out of heat, males are still interested in the female, question mark. Is that true? Yes, my female is in heat and the boy keeps sniffing and smelling on her, but she's running away from her. I'm not sure if she's going into heat or coming out. Please let me know. Right, so so the problem with this is, is that the, uh, the behavior of a dog right before she's ready and right after she's ready is the same. So a dog that is, um, a dog that's getting close but not ready will do some flagging. Its tail will go off to the side if it's got one. Will do some kind of butt pushing towards the male. Will allow the male to sniff and, 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 and lick on her. But probably will not let any kind of mounting go on for more than about five seconds. She'll just move out of the way. And she might get aggressive. She might snap at him. She might turn around and try and bite him. But the same kind of things go on when you're the other side of ready. So let's just draw a little graph here. And what we're looking at is, this is days in heat. And we will start with day zero, and we're gonna go through to about day 15. Most dogs are ready to be bred around day 11 through about day 13. This is the normal range when a dog is receptive and can be bred successfully. Now, if you look at progesterone levels, progesterone level for the first five days is less than a one. So it's rocking along like this. And then about day nine, that is ovulation, and it'll come up to a level of about five, so we're about here. And then it jumps up really quickly, and we come up to a level of about 15, and that is the point where the dog is ready to be bred. So here we are in that range right there. So. The question is, in this little narrow area right here, let's just use a different pen, in this little narrow area right here, when we're saying this dog is ready to be bred, this area right here, the behavior on both sides of it is pretty much the same. And so where the heck are you? Well, the answer to this is you've just got really two ways that you can do this. The first is, well, maybe three ways. Blood color tells you something sometimes. Most dogs, they will start to lighten up in color about this point right here. So they're getting blood red, drops on the ground, and then it goes to clear up here. Most dogs. The problem with it is it's not all dogs. Some dogs continue to bleed through the entire process for the next 20 days, and some dogs show very little discharge at all, and you can't tell what's going on, other than the fact they're receptive to dogs. So, how do you tell where you are? Well, the first one is you could do a progesterone test. This is the most accurate, reliable way of doing this. If you've got a progesterone level of something less than you know, around five, then you are not ready to breed yet. This opening window is a progesterone level of about eight to about 20. Those are the numbers we're looking for. If the number is considerably higher than 20, you're past it and that dog's not getting bred. So basically, if you're not sure what's going on, the thing to do is get a progesterone level down at your vet, which requires blood to be drawn. With that information, you can tell whether you're this side of the curve or you're this side of the curve, and approximately when you need to breed. The last thing about this is you can do what's called vaginal cytology. I'm gonna get rid of this. Vaginal cytology is very cheap and easy to do. I can do vaginal cytology on a dog in a couple of minutes. And it really doesn't cost anything because all you do is take a cotton swab, stick it up inside the dog, the female, roll it around, pull it out, roll it out onto a slide, stain it with some stain, look it under a microscope. And what you will see is, is a dog that is in the area where it's ready to be bred, it'll have what's called cornified cells. They will be little flakes and they look like corn flakes. That's why it's called 100% cornified. There is nothing in the middle of them. They'll be different shapes. They tend to have irregular patterns on them when you look at them under a microscope. That's what you see in a dog that is 100% cornified. If they look more like fried eggs, they've got black centers on them, then you are still a few days out. You have not reached that point yet. So those, that, this can give you some good information. If you're seeing cornified cells on a fractional cytology, then you are at or close to the point where that dog is ready to be bred. If you see a few of these in there, you're close, but you're still a couple of days out. If you see none of those in there, they're all cornified, then you need to start breeding. If that's the only technique you're gonna use, I much prefer a progesterone level. 
far more accurate way of timing this. Okay, next question. Get my glasses on so I can read this. Okay, just gotta log in here. Um, are males attracted to females when they are already past the point of being fertile? You betcha. <laughs> yeah, you've heard of what? You've heard of a horn dog, right? A horn dog. So when you say a horn dog, you're specifically talking about the behaviour of male dogs. Male dogs. I mean, when I collect from one of my stud dogs, I will have a teaser bitch there who is typically not even close to being bred. Is not in proestrus. Is not fertile. Not at the point where she's you know she's completely out of it. But just having the female there can make a, a male be attracted to and try to breed and produce a better collection. So yes, they will be. Um, I think someone's trying to pull from a dog here. Uh, so yeah, so the problem here is, is this guy's trying to collect, this guy, well, Jude Ransford, is trying to collect from her male. Um, he's been running with the, in the yard with my bitch, who's a maiden bitch, and she's attempted to collect from him, and she's not getting it done. So, so the answer to this is, if a dog is less than seven months old, male, you're probably not gonna be successful, but he might be interested. Typically between seven months and a year old is a point where dogs can start to produce semen successfully. Typically nine or 10 months, sometimes as long as a year, almost always never as early as seven months. Seven months is the cutoff earliest date as far as the AKC is concerned to use a stud dog. Any age earlier than that, they say you're not allowed to register that dog. So they say that's a waste of time. Can't, well, not they say it's a waste of time. They say they're not gonna allow AKC registration on a dog that has performed with a female that is seven months or younger. My experience with this is I've never been successful in trying to mate a seven month old dog, but I do try to pull from dogs at seven months so I can get them into the process where when the time comes, they do what I want. And that's what this person should be doing. So what she's got to do is, is every week, every two weeks, she's got to try to collect from this dog. It doesn't just, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day and dogs don't know how to perform in a day either. They have to be introduced to this in a quiet, nice environment. It's like whining and dining. You don't just say wham, bam, thank you, man, when you're 12 years old as a, as a boy. You've got to develop a, a process where you're nice about the whole process and it's a rewarding experience for both the male and the female. So what I'm saying here is, is that start working with your male. If you know you would like to use him as a stud dog or you want to use him to, to, to have puppies with your female, then don't expect it to happen the first time. Get them introduced to this process. Collect from him, and you've got videos on how to do this manually into a cup, and make sure that you can do this successfully. And if these dogs are together all the time, then when the time comes that you want to do this, keep them apart for at least 12 hours. That will make a big difference. If you've got them running around together all the time, you're going to find that they probably are not going to be very successful trying to mate. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I've been breeding Shih Tzus, and although we do not breed for colour, we'd like to learn more about it. I was wondering if colours work the same way as they do for Frenchies. Yes, the answer is yes. These things we're talking about and colours generally do work exactly the same way for most dogs. Some dogs are more specific than others. Some dogs you can test for colours that you can't test for on others. An example of that would be in a Frenchie, you can't test for chocolate in most cases. Most dogs that you can. Uh, So someone's saying here, I tried, today I tried to uh, uh, mate my bitch with a dog, um, but uh, basically he said that they didn't get hooked up very well. And I think that either they didn't get hooked up or the semen came out after they did get hooked up. So what's, this, what's the solution for this? Well, the solution is to, do an, is to do an AI, do an artificial insemination. Take control of the process, collect from the dog in a cup, get an AI rod and inseminate the, the female. That will get it done. It's you taking over that last little bit of the process, and that will work. Uh, someone's asking what makes a platinum. Let's cover that really quickly. So a platinum dog is a lilac dog that is also cream. 
And from previous videos, we've talked about the e-gene. The e-gene trumps all other colors. If a dog is cream, it, it's like white paint. It absolutely covers up all the other colors that are there. So a, a, a platinum dog is in fact a lilac dog. A lilac dog is a dog that is both chocolate and blue. And it is also cream. And the cream trumps all this, so it then looks like a cream dog. It's a little bit different than this cream because of the dilution genes that are going on here. So you can, the eyes tend to be different. When they're born, the muzzle or the skin muzzle color is a little bit different. So you get some ideas that they're platinums. But that is a platinum dog. Now she goes on to ask about double recessive genes in platinums. And I have a, a, a new stud boy called Sir Humpelot, who is, I think, the very first platinum double A recessive dog in the United States. He is AA. He's double recessive. Double recessive black. Doesn't produce black dogs. What he produces is very uniform coat colors. So this, the genes, this is a platinum. That's what makes a dog a platinum. Got nothing to do with tan points. This dog could be that. It could be AT, um, it could be AT, AT, which is tan points. It could be ATA that still produces tan points. It could be AY, AY. This has got nothing to do with platinum. That's got to do with things like tan points. And then it could be brindle. Don't want that in my opinion, but he could be brindle. Could have two copies of brindle and he won't show it because cream covers everything. So to me, a platinum dog that's one that you'd want to use for breeding purposes would not have that. You would absolutely not have that. Okay, hope that explains that. Let's see. Okay, when receiving chilled semen, do you need to warm it up first? Great question, the answer is no. So the important thing on collecting chilled semen and using it is that if you look at a temperature of what's going on to the semen, so this is hours, and this is the point of collection, and this is, let's just go 48 hours later, which is a long time, typically you're gonna do something before that, but what needs to happen? Well, the answer is, this is temperature on this side here, so we're gonna to to go down to zero degrees freezing, five degrees, this is centigrade, 15 degrees, <clears throat> And 25 degrees. This is room temperature. So pulling the semen out of the dog is at 25 degrees centigrade. It's at essentially a little bit above room temperature because the dog's temperature is around is around 32 degrees centigrade, 101 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. So what you want to do is if this is done properly, the dog semen needs to be added to an extender and cooled down gradually over a four and a half hour, four hour period. And then it wants to be maintained exactly at five degrees until you use it, take it out of the flask, and there it is. It doesn't, this is super critical. This is, if you cool it down too quickly, you kill the semen, you cold shock it. To keep it at five degrees is super critical. If you, if you get it down where it goes down below five degrees, I wish I had a red pen here, but if it goes down below five, even for a small time, this kills it. This just kills the whole sample. Can't have that happening. If it doesn't get down to five degrees and it stays at a temperature above five degrees, the semen is a lot more active and it runs out of the extender and nutrients it's got and it doesn't survive either. So this, this portion here, getting it cooled down slowly, a, a, a very slow process, if that's one degree every 20 minutes, to get it cooled down to five degrees, maintain it at five degrees, requires a, a product like I have. This is my my shipping, my digital filling, but this is exactly what this does. So at the other end, which is really what the question was, I'm just having a plug in my device here. At the other end, this is not important. The, the warm-up period doesn't matter at all. You open the flask up, you take the semen out. By the time you've taken it out and had it on the counter for five minutes, it'll already be up to room temperature anyway. Um, so it's gonna take you that kind of time to get the semen collected into a syringe, get your girl ready, get her up on your leg, get the insemination rod in there. It's gonna be five minutes or more before you even push the plunger. By then it'll be up to room temperature anyway. But it's completely unimportant how quickly it warms up. It could warm up immediately. It can be cold when it goes into her and let her body warm it up. Doesn't matter at all. This end is unimportant. This end, super critical. And keeping it at five degrees, the, the more consistently you keep it at five degrees, 
the better chance you have that the semen is in great shape. And I can tell you, I've had shipments that have lasted for days because of weather conditions. I mean, four or five days, kept it at five degrees, and we still had litters where a normal shipping product would have, have a hope of getting it done. Okay, while well, I'm rubbing that off, let's go to the next question. We're probably getting out of time on this session. <laughs> well, I'm gonna read this one because it's a plug for me. We're a small breeder in California. We just produced a litter of three weeks ago and we used James's perimeter heating system. We're talking about my woven system. Which is the best investment we ever made for our breeding program. This is the e easiest litter we've ever produced today, and I believe it's thanks to James Perimeter Heating System. Thank you very much. That is William Silver. Uh, I appreciate that. And you're exactly right, William. This is the way this thing works. I'm just going to touch on this really quickly, and then I'm going to end this thing just so I can give a plug to myself. So, um, I've got videos on this, but I, can, I promise you, if you're not using this system, you really absolutely should be. So, how does it work? So there's a tray that comes with a crate, or you can have a floor that's, that's on the, you know, you can manufacture a floor in your old whelping box. So the nor I'm looking down on the floor. So the normal way that you do things is you either have a heat lamp up here, and the heat lamp is closest to mum, she's getting cooked, she's in her third coat, she hates you for this. She doesn't want to be in there with a baby, she's stepping up, she's trying to find a cool place, she's miserable. So don't use the heat lamp. They can even sunburn puppies. I hate heat lamps. So the next thing that you do is you go put a, uh, you put a, um, a, uh, a heating pad. This is what I used to do. You put a heating pad generally underneath the whole crate. So you put a heating pad here and you just heat this whole area up, right? So why do you do this? Well, the reason is, is that puppies can get cold. If they get cold, they, they will get in trouble very, very quickly. Within a matter of an hour, a cold puppy's in serious trouble. Can't regulate the temperature, they don't have much body mass, they don't retain heat very well, cold puppies die very, very quickly. So, the solution is you put a heat mat on it. Well, same situation again, guess what? Mum hates the heat, doesn't want to be in there with her babies. So, here is, here is the secret to the whole thing, and I'm in the process of patenting this. And I've been selling this product now for a while, and I've bought about 700, 800 people now using it. So, what do we do? We manufacture for you a heat tape. <clears throat> it's, a heat, it's a pressure sensitive tape that goes around <clears throat> the perimeter of whatever size whelping box, and we build it to fit whatever size whelping box that you choose. So, here's the heat. Should have a red pen, but I don't. So there's the heat, that's the only place there's heat in this whole thing. And it comes off to a thermostat that you plug into the wall and it reads out the temperature. We set the thing to about 40 degrees centigrade or about 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's regulated by this thermostat. That area there is the only place on the whole whelping box that is heated. Mum's in the middle here, she's happy as a clam, she wants to be in with her baby, she's not stepping up and down. And here's the clever part about the whole thing. We then Build this box so there is a pig rail, as a ledge all the way around on the inside of your crate. And what that ledge does, it's a place the puppies can get underneath. They can get underneath that ledge. If mum butts her butt up against the wall, she hits the pig rail first and she doesn't squish the puppies. So what you find is, is that the, the here's and this is a terrible drawing of a dog, so you have to excuse me for this, but here's a dog laying here, here's a dog laying here, and she's got puppies nursing on her. So the puppies are either nursing on her, or they are sitting underneath this pig rail getting nice and toasty warm. They don't like this open area. They will naturally start moving around, even at an hour old, they will start moving around, and they will either find mum and nurse, or land on this relatively cool area that mum likes, and they will start moving around, and they will find heat, which happens to be right under the pig rail, and all your puppies are lined up in this absolutely the safest possible place they could be, which is under the pig rail, keeping nice and warm, and mum loves you for it because she's in a fur coat, and she's not getting cooked. I promise you, this is the best thing. I leave my babies with mum, I've had a C-section, they come home about three hours later, they're in this crate with mum for the next three weeks. All I do is open the cage door up, let mum outside to go pee and poop. When she's done that, man, she's right back in here. She doesn't even want to get out of this system. She wants to stay in here with the puppies. So for a Frenchie, it's about a, we buy a 42 inch 
by 28 inch crate on Amazon. Costs about 55, 60 bucks. And then you install this heat tape on the bottom of the tray that comes with it. And Bob's your uncle. Everyone's happy. You're not getting up. You know, the people who are taking their puppies away and, and only introduce them to puppy to feed every three hours and the rest of the time they're somewhere else. Yeah. Mum doesn't like it. She gets anxiety. She wants to be with her babies. Put your mums with their babies all the time. Works beautifully. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching my video. If you're more interested in any of these things, my breeder supply, love my pups, you can get more information. You can call us, you can text us. Thanks for watching the video. Be nice to your puppies. Bye.